I want to have this conversation, Drizzy. It's a conversation I've been wanting to tackle for a minute, but now we have a new format. Um... I think this is uh, something that I'm gonna we're gonna dive into, and today I want to tackle the topic of why Eminem, aka Slim Shady, aka Marshall Mathers, is discredited in hip hop. Uh, is he talented? Uh, is he a talent in MC? Is he yes. overrated? Or and also the question is, does hip hop culture need black gatekeepers? Which one do you want to answer first? Um, because I've heard right. Okay, that's okay. I've heard in in the spaces that Eminem's not part of the culture. He's not relatable because mm-hmm. he's white, mm-hmm. and okay. his mom rapped when he raps. He's not top five, top ten artists of all time, which is obviously a subjective thing, right? Yeah, as music is. Um, and I've heard because he's white, a lot of people think he shouldn't be respected. Right, I've even heard some people say they don't even we don't hear Eminem in clubs, and he's a guest. I mean that's fair. I I think that's I think that's a fair point to make. I think that has holds a lot of credence to it. You don't hear Eminem in the club unless it's like someone plays a remix on next episode. Yeah, um, on his, like from his album, but you don't really hear like what Eminem record would you hear? Maybe a. Uh, the real Slim Shady. Can the mm. real Slim Shady please stand up? But even yeah. that's kind of forcing the box. But then, but like obviously, hip, there is a lot of music in. There's a lot of hip club culture music in hip hop, right? Mm. But there's also radio. There's also yeah, no, 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 but, stadium. Right, there's but also I feel like arenas. Some of our best best to offer. If we was having genre versus genre versus genre versus genre, yeah. you support at starting five or starting eleven. Yeah. You'd want artists who tick all the boxes. Yeah, he did, now, well, not... in, he did well in his time, like when he yeah. first blew. But I feel like it's not something people go back to want to listen to nowadays. I don't think. Yeah, Unless I he was think a proper aged, dedicated. I don't think his music has aged well. Yeah. You know, maybe Stan. You could play Stan if you you you're used to a Bunny. I boiler. hear Stan. Club yeah, sometimes. You know what I'm saying, but that's a uh, one of arguably the best songs ever made. So you can go back to it whenever. I I I, I believe that this part of com- this part of the conversation, you and Keisha are talking for yourselves. Mm. When's I, the last time you listened to Eminem album? Four months ago, five months ago. What one was it? It's first and the second album. Yeah, it's proving the point. It's then. my favorite. But then, but, but then you're proving Big, the point. Biggie's got two albums that you can but only he, right. Wait, can wait, only wait, have wait. two. You albums. Can't, no, you can't use that in the argument. Why? Because Biggie, unfortunately, God bless the dead, wasn't around to continue his legacy Legacy. and his work. Facts. M, I think one of the problems people have with M, but they they, they dust it up as a colour thing. I don't think it's a colour thing. I think Eminem never really adapted to the times. Mm. So he's always wrapped like it's still 1999, 98, 97, 96. Uh, no, when he come out like 2000, 2001, he still raps like that. He never really changed. And I think the sound kind of walked past him. He didn't run past him because he's he's a lyrical G, but he walked past him and he didn't pay attention to it. Jay-Z has adapted to the times. Yeah. Nas has adapted to the times. Snoop is Snoop. You don't have to worry about Snoop. Yeah. Snoop's a comedian. Yeah. But I just feel like Eminem never, and when he realized, oh man, I'm sounding like I'm sounding like... I'm on the Slim Shady LP or the Marshall Mathers LP. It was too late. Now I feel like he's playing catch up, but it sounds like he's forcing it. Right. Because we know he's a lyrical Gongargan. We know that. Yeah. It doesn't matter what color he is. But he does have a, I don't know if it's a stubbornness where he's like, well, this is what made me and got me to where I need to, where I am. Yeah. I'm just going to keep doing that. And you can't, you have to adapt in, because hip hop is a young man's game. If you're sounding like the hip, the hop, the hippie, the hippie to the hip, hip hop. We respect that song and we like it in certain confinements and yeah. areas and <clears throat> uh, environments. But you're not on a on an afternoon when you get home from work before you giggle yourself into bed, <laughs> going to listen to a hip, a hop, a hippie, a hippie to the hip, hip. But it don't work like that. But if you're at a barbecue and it comes on, you start reciting the lyrics. Yeah. And M, who's got access to one of the, arguably one of the greatest producers in music of all time, 
I just feel like he should have always been a bit more better equipped. This guy's got game coming in the studio. Kendrick Lamar, like Dr. Dre's working with all these dons, and you're still giving us the same and the, the the flow and the the bars. Where it's like the shock horror, the shock bars. I think we're past that now. It's it, it, it's weird. To, it's weird because the way you're explaining it, it it almost sounds like you're saying Eminem's niche. No. When, I'm saying Eminem, in my humble opinion, I feel like musically Eminem is stubborn. He's good at something and I think he could adapt to the times. Yeah. I think he's refused to do so just because in his eyes, I have to be a lyrical miracle all the time, which you can be, but you could be lyrical and still give us a, a what's a lyrical song that like pops off in the club? Like, there's songs, I'm trying to think of a song right now. You don't have to dumb down just to, we gonna make it. It's not a club song. Oh, the so what was that? <laughs> what did Mariah Carey obsessed. I hear oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a tune, you know. And the Gucci, but, but <laughs> we gonna make it. It's not right. a club song. Okay, but it so, slaps in the club. All right, let's deep dive. Let's deep dive because I've got some. I've got things to say, and I like this conversation. Um, we know hip hop. We know hip hop originated from us, right? Cool her, yeah. Jamaican culture, yeah. black culture. Um, and but there's always been a participants of cultures from outside of the black culture. Of course, breaking um, gu- uh, graffiti. Yeah, the, the, um, the, the elements that make up hip hop. The culture. Yeah, his, rap is the music of. So it started hip-hop. out in the Bronx, and there was yeah. a big Hispanic, Latino, right, Asian. Shout out to them. Yeah, um, uh, influence. Yeah, right, <clears throat> and so. You've had Beastie Boys, you've had Cypress Hill, shout out mm-hmm. to Be Real. You've had House of Pain, Vanilla yep. Ice at the yep. time. Um, and fast forward, you've got Informer. Eminem, yeah, who man. had Infinite Album first, yeah. but no one really heard it. It was very quite, it was quite underground. And then he, um, he built a buzz up, a really good buzz. So much so that, because obviously, as you know, when we were consuming him pop at that time, it's the... It's the 90s, late 90s, 2000s. It was Tim Westwood yeah. who was our source mm-hmm. for hip hop music. Yeah. And when I heard Eminem's record, I just don't give a F. Yeah. I actually thought he was black. Yeah, because, yeah. When I used to, because I remember actually traveling on the train, had my earphones in, yeah. playing, because this is this is TDK days, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm he listening to recorded the- Recorded it. Yeah, recorded yeah. It, uh, Tim's yeah. show- Listen back to it on the, on my commute, and I'm listening to this song, and I'm thinking, "Raw, this guy's cold. Like, who is this guy? Lyrically sick. St- just stood out. Cadence stood out. Stood out. Rhyme pattern stood out, um, and his flow was amazing. But then, obviously, I found out it was white. Mm-hmm. Signed to Dr. Dre, um, and that that Slim Shady album, the Slim Shady album, the LP." I remember a friend of mine, shout out to Gifty. I was living in Wembley at the time and she messaged me. She rang me first. She rang me, then she messaged me, says, I'm coming to your yard. I said, cool. Because remember back in the day when we was young, bro, it was like, you, the link up was just random. You had nothing else to do just to link, right? Anyway, Gifty's called me, messaged me, come to my yard, brought me back to her house and said, you need to listen to this album. Oh, that's a bit backwards. She yeah. came to your yard just to get you. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, Why yeah. Why did she just tell you to come to hers? No, because that was, she, she liked that, she liked that commute still. Because I used to live in Wembley and she lived like just down the road. Okay, so she liked, she, she would, she, bro, no, you can't lock my it. door, bro. Do I have to explain it, bro? But no, I, no, I'm not, I don't I need you to say <laughs> why she's like, your door. That doesn't make it's sense. It's just that like, no. we're at point B. She w- and instead of her telling you at point A to come to point B, she needs point B to go to point A just to go back to point don't, B. Didn't right? you have friends that used to link you on their bikes, but then you'd they'd come to your house to go back to theirs? It's just, it's just normal shit that man used to do back in the day. You know what I mean? Okay, let's like, not digress. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, she... Uh, she came to the crib, brought me back to hers, played that Slim, that Slim Shady LP. And I was like, mate, you know, but by the way, there's a lot of women. There's a few women that's actually introduced me to hip hop acts in my past. Like two women are come to my mind. I'm not going to out them, but give these one. And it's like, it's, that's quite interesting. Anyway, um, 
<coughs> so we, as you said, we can't talk album sales with, with Eminem. We're not going to do that. I didn't mention it. that. But We're I'm not going to do the album sales the conversation. No. All right. I see what you're saying. Right. I don't have a problem with Eminem. Yeah. I just think that, I think, I'm only talking from what I see online. I think people think like he's came, he's taken what he needed out of hip hop. Got ridiculous, like he's easily one of the biggest selling artists of any genre of all time. I think maybe people just want to see either, not be super accessible, but maybe put back in something. Like, I don't know. Like, what has Eminem put back into bar 50 cent? But then 50 was already buzzing. So it's kind of like he just gave him a bigger platform. But like, mm. what has he put back cent, into the scene? 50 puts him up on a higher, as a, he, he puts him so up he on should, a higher. So he should, because, yeah, so he, he should, you know what I'm saying? He bit, M, M had like a big influence on the underground as well. He like, he did the battle rap thing and was heavy in that for a long yeah. time. And but, then he did a lot of underground the, what music. What is the root of this problem? Because we have like a Jack Hollow who I I I I mess with Jack Hollow. I like Jack Hollow, but he doesn't get the flack Eminem gets. That's it. But I feel like maybe it's because Jack is a little bit more of a chameleon in regards to like he'll do this, then he'll do he'll flip Fergie's glamorous into first class, <laughs> then he'll do this, he'll do that, boom, 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 boom. I think it's an adaptability thing with Eminem. I'll tell you what it is. Go ahead. The Benzino situation. Nah. Nah. That's just one person. The culture has a pro. We're not. Let me not say the whole culture, but parts of the culture have this long-standing issue with Eminem. And yeah. I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe it's because they feel like he hasn't put back into what he's taking out. So he's gone to the well. He's drank water. Drank water. Garden his garden. Wet his plants in the house. Filled up his shower. Filled up his bar. Yeah. He hasn't put something back in. It's not a case of he can't rap. That no one. No, that's not. A, that's not a question. He, if he can rap. But I just feel like there's something like he hasn't either put back into the scene or he hasn't adapted to the time or he just feels like M just secludes himself in a little shed, just raps, riggy rap, 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 over beats, puts stuff out, then goes, hides away. Like I could be, I could be wrong, but let me give me my explanation why I've mentioned Benzino because back in that, was, I think it was like 2022 when they had the beef. The reason why that beef started was because Benzino was running the source yeah. and back in the day, back in the day. And, and, uh, he got, he gave the Eminem show four out of five mics okay. and Eminem was upset about that and dissed him. Right. So straight away, right. That's some idiot thing. And then they back and forth, went back and forth for a minute with, they had numerous yeah, 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 songs yeah. on each other yeah. for a hot minute. And then uh, Benzino won, but they, he had Buster Rhymes, 50 cent, all these, Proof, D12, yeah. all of them shooting at Benzino. Yeah, yeah, because that's the squad. So you squad up. You know it's, what I mean? It's bullying, but all right, fair enough. And, <laughs> but then what happened was, do you remember that pe press conference with the media where Benzino outed Eminem for saying, calling black women bitches? And oh, he, he said it, And he said, and he used the N-word yeah. in I, that. I, I, maybe, maybe that's the world where people was like, fuck this guy. But well, that's what I'm Excuse trying to... But this is what I'm saying. That, like, there's... Definitely something where there's a shift yeah. and there's, this is why I'm asking the question about Eminem. He's clearly talented. He's clearly, it has influenced a lot of culture, but also he's offended yeah. the culture too. Yeah. And he had to backtrack. I remember he had to back, he come out with a statement and said, look, he was upset at the time. He was dating someone black. He was dating a black girl and he was frustrated with the Brother, situation. as a Caucasian man, it's a privilege for you to have a sister give you some play. You know? So the fact that, and I get it because they are golden, but whatever happened, you're no longer with her. And you, your mind, your mind tells you, you know what I should do? Just make a rap <laughs> and just diss them all <laughs> based off my one experience. <laughs> you know how dumb that sounds? Do you, do you, do you, I wouldn't even, I'm not even, put, whoever told him, that's a good, that's a good rebuttal to what happened. They're stupid. Fire, fire your, 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 your PR team, bro. That's dumb. Black people, um, Eminem used the word, the N-word. Yeah. On songs. Yeah. At that particular time as well. Um, but do we think black, white people don't use the N-word? No, we we know they do. Yeah. In the comfort of their own home. In, yeah. In the All the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, produ we produce music with that word in there that they love and they will recite bar what, for bar. What, what's the word? What? That word. Nighttime. <laughs> I think the statement, he had to come out with that statement. 
he, no, he, he no, he could have taken time. He could have took as much time as Meek Mill did to record <laughs> that diss record to flipping Drake. He could have took time and come out with a way better answer than that. And just said, hey, you know what? <sighs> I messed up. Yeah. I should have never have done that. Yeah. I can't take it back. And I'm going to do, I've tried everything I, think I can to. He, I think he, that's what he did. Dude. Yeah, but he, you said, he said, oh, I was, I was upset because, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. Shaniqua didn't give the white boy <laughs> him some, she <laughs> didn't put the chocolate in my m M&M, so I was just like, nah, bro. It's just so what? When you, you don't know, get your way, that's what you did? Do you know the crazy revelation out of that whole press conference is that People were saying, "Rare Eminem was really that wasn't that great lyrically, and he's improved in the last ten years." Because up to that point, that was that was ten years before. Um, but then, okay, cool. Let's fast forward quickly to Benzino being on Drink Champs and getting super drunk, and ended up really saying that he doesn't have any beef with Eminem at all. Really, it was just a conflict. It was just a, a battle that they had. Yeah. Things got deep as they do in battle rap, or per, things got personal. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe, right, that he does belong in a culture. Mm-hmm. I, I guess I look at, at when I, my relationship with Eminem as an artist is different to most, like as his music, to his music. Okay, as soon as it's, uh, is, is, is because I'm a rapper and I'm a lyricist, mm-hmm. that's why I connected with him the most. Right. Because you'll find when you have, cert, you have you've got certain types of hip hop um you have different types of hip hop fans. There's hip hop fans that like certain artists. There's hip hop that's like club music. There's the backpackers. There's the we can go. We can go. Keep going mm-hmm. down the yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the totem pole. But I like lyricists. I always, I always have. I always will. So why I put Eminem up there is because of that. Because I listen to him differently. Like it didn't. I I, I wouldn't say I related with him too tough. Mm-hmm. But when I heard these word, when I heard the wordplay, it was unbelievable how he used to put his words together. The way that he used to just put sentences, is the deep stuff that he used to say that you would go over your heads. And now, obviously, if you're just a casual listener, mm-hmm. that stuff is not even you don't give a shit about that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But I feel like if you're like if you're like me, you would have had Eminem up there as one of the one of the greats. Dr. Umar don't feel like he is because he's white, but... Okay. It, it, now, I, this I, is a great segue. Yeah, talk to me. Because I feel like this Eminem thing ties into something that I've seen, uh, which has taken, picked up a lot of steam over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, shout out to all my um, Jamaicans out there. Um, how can I put this? Where has this narrative come from where everyone's claiming Jamaica. Is it, what is that? Did you just saying that that's now? Do you remember when Africans thought they were Jamaicans? Well, they can get away with that. But there's a <laughs> there's a narrative that's going around now where and anyone... And now, think about it. Think yeah. about, but hold that thought. Oh, think yeah. about it. Africans wanted to be Jamaicans and now Jamaicans want to be Africans. <laughs> As the world turns. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? Do they? Yeah, like, like when I say when I say Jamaicans want to be Africans, I mean J- Jamaicans or Caribbean people now associate wait, wait, Africa of because of the music. Why are you? Why are you, just stick stick in your Jamaican box? Don't expand it to. Cool, Caribbean. cool. I let you continue because I because I because I interrupted. You did too much. Yeah, go for it. The Caribbean just. Um, <laughs> Sorry. No, but there's there's a there's a there's a there's a rise uh, in. Um, All rise. Shout out to Blue Down oh, Tour, nice. you know. Um, shout out to um no, not shout out to what I'm saying. So there's a rise in uh I'll, I'll put you off with the African in, and Jamaican, Jamaican African. Yeah, that's wild. That's yeah, a wild yeah, take. Yeah, yeah. There's a rise in like Caucasians bred in Jamaica. Oh, like, that's from, what you mean. Yeah, but yeah. they're saying like they're from they they they're part of the culture. Yard and Do you mean like, like what M the R? But I mean, first of all, <laughs> I was gonna mention the days. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Um, I mean, shout out to M. Dot R. Boy, there's another one as well. There's another one. Yeah, I've did it, bro. There is like a, a few. They're like a Harry or factory. They just bring out different types of sweets from the same place. But so my thing is, is like, when did Jamaica become yeah. the Nike Panda Dunks of the of the Caribbean, bro? It's like, cool. everyone's claiming it's it. It's cool to be Jamaican, bro. It's always been cool to be Jamaican. Yeah, but it's. Facts. There's there's there's, cool, there's warning to, and then there's the breading. 
the bread in the dot in the sun. It's like you can't, brother. The, the bakery sales. Bro, your name can't be Greg's and telling me you're from yard. That don't work. All your life you've been eating yeah. beans on toast, which yeah. slaps by the way, yeah. and, and bangers and mash, yeah. and, and flipping pie and jelly eel and gravy and all that stuff and liquor. And all of a sudden you want to be like switching up. Yo, me from yard, you know. The, the code switching, I don't. I don't respect. I just don't get it. I understand, right? Because we are, Jamaicans are very big on influence. Yeah, of course. That's but, never in doubt. But I feel like when people code switch too much, yeah. like, like code switching is when you go, like my, co- my my idea of code switching is like when you're at work, you talk a little that's bit more that's formal. That's and, etiquette. Yeah. But that's still a code switch because I can't, yeah, okay, I wouldn't yeah. say to my boss, yo, why well, go on my G? I mean, if he allowed you to, you probably If he would, would yeah. But yeah. that I'd keep that. But that's it. part of you. Yeah. You've been in that environment. Of course, of course. Your family is of that ilk. But, as, but that's... Your but, bloodline, shout out to Roman Reigns, is of Jamaican heritage. Yeah, of course. But then I might... So I might... But what I'm saying to you is, there's a certain... Yeah, you're right. There's a certain etiquette that you have in different environments. Yeah. But there's, a, there's still a code that you use. Even in an interview, you wouldn't is still things that you wouldn't say or Absolutely. do. Absolutely. You know how to, you know, switch up your your Your, your, your vocabulary. Language. But I'm just thinking, what the, the problem I have is with, if Bradley's grown up around us in the estates and that, yeah. and then Bradley starts <laughs> jumping on dancehall <laughs> rhythms, <laughs> switch his name to Paul Smith, and starts spitting, and then when someone approaches him that doesn't know him from Sh- the end. Shonda, Paul, Shonda Bradley. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then he's like, yeah, what's your, what's your, who, who are you? Yeah. Um, Stephen Banton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, Stephen Banton. I'm, I'm from Yard. Where yeah, are you from? Yeah. Kingston. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. surprise. Yeah, yeah. These mofos <laughs> never choose anywhere else but Kingston. Like, we don't know. That's like saying you're from London, but you, bruv, choose somewhere else. Like, yeah, I'm from Southampton. Right, let me ask you a question. Is, do you think those people are tapped? Brother, they, listen. Because, uh, because, uh, like, all right, cool. Let's say I'm in an environment. I don't know. One day I get shipped out to Iceland, and I'm living in Iceland now, yeah. and I'm with Caucasian family, and I live there. Yeah. Would you think I? I'm not necessarily just going to start moving like them. Still, no. Like, but there'll be things within their environment and their surroundings that, that you will you will pick up. Yes, it's, they're it's, it's, and all it's, them a, it's the nature of it's, it's the nature of habit. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. in your of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. But I just don't understand where it's like you could be a fan of said place, right. Jamaica, right. But it's the <sighs> Clark Kent Superman thing they're doing where it's like when they're at home, they're Paul Smith, mm-hmm. but when they're outside now, nah, they're Shonda Paul. They're Shonda Paul. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too much. They're, they're, they're Bradley Banton. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, they're not even see, calling themselves popcorn. They're calling interview? themselves like Coca-Cola or what something. What was that Donnie's name? I don't know his name. Who? Um, M. Dot. I don't know. What was it? Uh, the producer Joe. Been... What's his name? What's his name? Which one? The guy who's oh, on like yeah. one extra and everything. Well, M. Dot R. Yeah, he's him. M. Dot R. He, was, he had an interview recently and he explained the reason why he he's that he's that way. He said he's grown up with us. He's his family has been integrated in, but then he wasn't born in Jamaica, and I could hear the breakup in his patois a lot of the time. Um, which is why I asked: is uh, is there something disjointed? Is there is he a what do you think? He's delusional. Is he a two slices short of a loaf? Well, like mental health. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And we, and we don't want to, you know what I mean? Mental health is serious, is a serious yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. But is it, is, it might be that. It's just because some, like, some people just embrace something so much that they think. They believe it. That's it. Like, yeah. they, they just believe that's what it is. You know what I mean? And you don't have to be jealous because you're Dominican and you don't get Dominican. Jealous of what? I don't know. I'm just asking. That, whoa, that's, that's a right. straight. Yeah, yeah, that, just, I'm just asking. Like, no, please, no, please no. elaborate. No, 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 I don't know. Like, if, <laughs> no, 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 no. Would you bring it up? Would you bring, would you bring up a conversation with, with a white Donny that started doing uh, soca music and he's, and then started going on podcast? No, but we have, right. Okay. Do you? Look, okay, here's the thing, bro. <laughs> All right. You could be around a certain culture and pick up certain things. Yeah. The cooking. Yeah. 
the way you make certain alcoholic beverages, Facts. the way you wear your clothes. Facts. Hip hop has influenced people who are not of our hue yeah. to move and act and speak a certain way. But I feel like you can talk how you talk as you are from where you've grown up, mm-hmm. as in your cult, your mm-hmm. surroundings, Facts. and be a fan of a culture that's over there. I agree. But don't bread it. Like you're trying to be like yeah. Superman and Clark Kent, where during the day you're super, you're Clark Kent, and then at night you're Superman. So you think he's going home and going, oh, what, mate? All right, brother. All right, I think up. as soon as he walks through the door, <laughs> he puts his slippers on, ITV, yeah. Coronation Street, yeah. uh, 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 a cup of rosy, takes down his braids, right, right, yeah, puts a robe on, uh-huh. cup of cup of rosy, and and it's it's, it's a pie and mash thing. Yeah. And I don't be very stereotypical there, and I fully hold my hands up to that. But I just don't understand how you talk like that because you grew up around like yeah. the man. Then would not, I would not be comfortable if you were around me. And you can't be like picking up. But that man, they can't be around us though. Yeah, facts. Can't them man can't be around us. And then them man are gonna profit off the, which is why we need gatekeepers. Right. Because so that's crazy. No, no because don't yeah. worry, I pay attention, bro. Because yeah. I know you asked me two questions and right. that's why I brought up the Jamaica thing to come back to here. Yeah. One love. You said that to, you said that to say to say this, right? right? But we do need gatekeepers because we're like, yo fam, you can love the culture. You could even be a reggae or dance or artist. Mm-hmm. But how about you do it in the way you talk on the rhythms that we produce? Yeah. Bring you to the table. Yeah. Don't bring us why you yeah. in your kind of mixed up? Would you think it? Do you think it sounds like he's mocking slightly, brother? Yeah. I feel like that is on some Ali G type. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, it's like that's a, what it reminds yeah, me of. Yes. I haven't seen a lot of clips, and I've I don't want to say he's disingenuous. He yeah. could be so gassed and infatuated yeah. with yeah. the culture, yeah. but bro, be you. Yeah. In the dance. Don't yeah. come in the dance and try and be like your, your beanie man or something. Yeah. You no. Know, yeah, be you and bring what you bring to the table because you it, it comes across like it's a, a mockumentary. Absolutely. Like it's a parody. Absolutely. But do we feel like sometimes we open up the culture sometimes and then want to start measuring how much people use it? Sister Keisha? I, yeah. Thank you for that. that I think alley-oop. it's difficult though. I no, think it's, it's very diff- it's a difficult thing to do though, isn't yeah. it? Keepers, how yeah, how are you going to do the it? The culture has now become the barbecue of settings. Yeah, we need gatekeepers. You need to know the history of certain cultures. You need to know where it originated from. Yeah. You need to know the certain power players. You need to show respect to the thing, and then you get after accepted. a trial period, we will decide and review your application whether you should come in the thing. Mm. But I I'll think, be I'll be on, honest. On. I don't think having gatekeepers on black culture or Caribbean culture, West Indian culture, whatever you want to call it, is going to work because we're not even on the same page as a collective. So for us then to start Hamburger. putting a putting a measure on who can say and do what when we're not even collectively on the same page we ourselves. We haven't even got our own shit together. Yeah, sorry. And we've got... Yeah, but, but, okay. Okay. I, but I don't... I, I think that's enough. I think we should leave that for another okay, discussion. Because cool. yeah. I, I can go down the path of... I, not, Joe has mentioned it several times in podcasts. We're not a monolith, bro. Let's let's say that for another time. Okay, say nothing. Say nothing. It's the Drizzy and Morgan show. Sure. Yeah. Should be loved.